Welcome back to the Lori Live COVID-19 edition. The best announcement since March. I'm Lauren. And I'm Jane. We are, we are your hosts coming to you live from our own homes. And whether you're back at your desk from the classroom or learning in front of a camera, it's great to have everyone back from a long March, uh, wait, no, summer break. We're planning having three shows per week with new content, themes, and members of the broadcasting class. If you have any contributions, questions, or recommendations, check out the Lawyer Life form for updates. We also know that things can be boring at times, so we have a quick clip that may help. I am very bored. So I'm going to watch every movie in my collection. Oh god, there's so many. Well, let's get started. knowledge. I feel so powerful. I'm bored again. Maybe I should go read every book I own. Thank you, Jamie, for the clip. After the broadcast, I think I'm going to spend some time hitting the books, too. Next up, we have some announcements from the Student Council. Student Council meeting will be held by via class, Google Classroom. All students are welcome to join using the code NVUDEP2. Virtual meetings via Google Meet will be held every two weeks. Stay tuned for the date and time of the first meeting. The Student Council is looking for four people to, who are eligible to be vice presidents and a few uh, student senators. To be a vice pres president, you need some experience either as a member of the Student Council or uh, part of the leadership club. Uh, you also need a, re a recommendation from a staff member. Co-presidents are responsible for student council meetings, communication with staff, members about uh, staff members about events and issues, while representing all the interests of the several students. Student senators, on the other hand, will represent all the several students at the OCDSB student uh, senate meetings. This will involve working with student senators from other schools, student trustees, administrators, as well as board staff. Interest, interested students should email Madame Muse by 4 p.m. on Thursday, September 24th if you want to apply. Also, feel free to check out their Instagram account for news on upcoming events or if you want to join the student council. Here we have our photo of the day, a shot of a type of napweed a wildflower with a thistle-like flowering plant of the family Astraces. Thank you for the gorgeous uh, photo of some purple wildflowers. Well, with all the chilly weather coming along, there won't be many flowers left. So feel free to send us your photos at laurielive.googroups.com. Orange Shirt Day is coming up this Wednesday. If you don't know much about it, here we have Jane interviewing Madame LaDuke on the importance of the event. Hello everybody, I'm Jane, a Laurier Live member, and here we have with us the amazing, the spectacular, Miss LaDuc, the one, the only, Librarian of Sir Will! Yay! Hi Lancers, happy to see you. Thank you for joining us this lovely afternoon. Uh, so here we are going to talk about Orange Shirt Day. So, would you like to tell us what it is about? Orange Shirt Day is a national commemoration date uh, on September 30th, uh, at, which is a time when we uh, remember the impact and legacy of the Indian residential schools on First Nations, Métis, and Inuit students 
as well as their families and their communities. Why is it important that we celebrate Orange Shirt Day? Well, Jane, that's a great question. Um, the Indian Residential School uh, institutions were in place for a very long time in our country. And uh, even though they no longer exist, we're at a point in Canadian society where we're really paying attention to the impact that these school institutions had on our Indigenous communities. So even in 2020, it's actually re very relevant for us to take time on a designated day to, to, to learn more about uh, what happened in those school systems uh, and how this continues to impact Indigenous communities. How would students and staff get involved in Orange Shirt Day? Well, there are a couple of things that you can do. Uh, first and foremost, the, the idea of Orange Shirt Day is that uh, people who are marking, paying attention to this um, commemoration are wearing orange that day. So students and staff are encouraged to wear orange t-shirts or orange hoodies, any orange shirt that they have. Uh, the reason orange is so important on this day is that uh, the, the person who founded this day as a commemoration, Phyllis Webstad, uh, on her first day attending Indian residence, residential school, uh, she was wearing a new orange shirt that her grandmother had bought for her, uh, but that piece of clothing was taken away from her when she arrived at the school. And so for her, the significance of the orange shirt is very important. And, and we built the whole commemoration date around that, uh, that single event that impacted that one person. How did you get involved in being the activity coordinator for Orange Shirt Day? Uh, over the course of the years, I've had the opportunity to do some great um, learning under the Indigenous Education Team at uh, the Ottawa Carleton District School Board. So I've had opportunities to network and to attend a lot of different uh, events and uh, PD sessions uh, so that I could brush up on my, uh, my Indigenous education portfolio. Uh, and with that in mind, uh, when Madame Parent was uh, leaving for parental leave, uh, I was asked if I would take this on as part of um, my responsibilities in the school, and I, I do so uh, with great honor. I'm very happy to be able to um, be the person who's who's organizing around Orange Shirt Day, and also who's like a liaison for students and families with the Indigenous Education team at the board. Is there anything else you would like to add on before we finish our interview? Yes, uh, apart from wearing orange on Wednesday, September 30th, uh, there are different learning activities that I have posted to the library Google Classroom under the heading Orange Shirt Day at Sir Will. And uh, some of those activities include looking at the statement of apology to former students of Indian residential schools, also exploring the story of uh, Shani Wenjak, uh, through Gord Downey and Jeff Lemire's uh, The Secret Path. And I've added a few other things as well that students and families are welcome to take a look at. Thank you for that. We're hoping that all students and staff wear their orange shirts on Wednesday, September 30th. Have a good day. Rowan's Law Day was named after Rowan Stringer, a student from John McCree Secondary School, who died in the spring of 2013 from a concussion. Now, on September 30th, students get together to raise awareness about how serious a concussion can really be. If anyone has any questions about the two events, feel free to contact Madame LeDuc for more information. Well, Lancers, that's all we have uh, for today. Please tune in on our next show. If you have any of your own clips, ideas, or announcements, feel free to send them in at laurielive.googlegroups.com. Bye now. Bye.